On February 2nd of this year, NRA lost a treasured family member, Texas lost a proud son, and America lost one of her greatest heroes. Please watch this video. Ladies and gentlemen, we're extremely honored today to be joined by Chris's brave and loving wife, Taya. Please give her a warm welcome. Thank you. It's an honor to be here with you today. America needs people like you who are willing to stand up and fight for part of what makes America great. In the next few minutes, I want to share my personal perspective of what you are doing when you expend your time and energy to protect our freedoms, not just those protected by the Second Amendment, but all of them. I'm sure you know the reason I'm here speaking to you today instead of my husband, Chris Kyle. I challenge anyone to tell me there isn't evil in this world. From the days of Cain and Abel, we know all too well there will always be evil. But that evil shouldn't take away our freedoms. In fact, the only way to defeat evil is by taking advantage of our freedoms. And so, let me talk about some sides of Chris you maybe don't know, and use his experiences to highlight why our freedoms and the responsibility to do good that goes with them are so important. First, promise me that you will not think of Chris solely as a hero. He wouldn't want that. Instead, I ask you to see him the way he would have wanted you to see him, as just an everyday boy who did his best at what he loved, growing into an everyday man, loving his God, loving his country, Woo! 
and loving his family. Like many young boys, Chris and his brother Jeff developed a sense of justice through playing in the outdoors. They used their pretend rifles, fighting imaginary bad guys, copying the heroes they saw in John Wayne movies. Those early battles nurtured a strong desire to protect others from evil and fight for what was right. As he got older, Chris's parents were adamant about teaching the importance of gun safety and proper use of real guns. He began to respect firearms as tools that could bring as much harm as good. When he learned to safely shoot and hunt, he was taught only to kill what he needed for food. He developed an appreciation of guns as a means of providing nourishment while exploring the peaceful essence of nature with his family. Chris grew up to be a fine cowboy, and a handsome one at that, if you don't mind me saying. I'm sorry, the picture's in front of me too. He won championship buckles and rodeos and worked for several years on ranches. His guns were once again a tool to provide food for a happy, albeit broke, young man. Importantly, his guns were also a way to protect himself and the animals in his care from predators ranging from rattlesnakes to coyotes. While many people knew Chris as the American sniper, and appreciated his ability with a gun, far less people know that Chris only wrote that book because other people were going to write it about him, and he felt proper credit wouldn't be given to those he served with. He also knew he could be portrayed as something he wasn't. By writing it himself, he could stay true to his self-effacing, humble nature while still giving credit to others. He also said countless times that while publishers and some parts of the public are impressed with numbers of kills, that number did not interest him. A number that would have been much more important to him would have been if someone could have told him the number of lives he saved. Saving lives was the only motivation he had. That was why he went to war. Saving lives came with a price, though. It forced him to let go of his innocence. But he dug a little deeper and loved his fellow man enough to take on the immense responsibility of using his gun, the only effective tool he had, to stop the evil coming at them. Chris often said, members of the military voluntarily sign a blank check to the United States of America for a price up to and including their life. His goal was to make that price as low as possible. He used his rifle to do that. When faced with a decision to fire or let an American die, Chris dug deep. He found courage. He was able to use his weapon to save lives of those he was sent to protect. Many people have told me heart-wrenching stories about how they would not be alive today if it were not for Chris. He felt a sense of purpose and fulfillment protecting the people around him. He appreciated the guns that helped him do that. I've been blessed to hear from a U.S. Marine who knew with all certainty that he, and consequently his young daughter, would not be alive today if it were not for Chris's service. 
I have witnessed parents addressing Chris with tears in their eyes, thanking him for saving the life of their child. Chris knew the stories of countless people who returned home thanks to his skills. He also knew the pain of loss caused by guns and anguished over those he couldn't save every day of his life. He had to fight to come back from the dark, heavy weight of loss that he felt when his friends died on the battlefield. But Chris was strong enough to face the bad head on, to push through and live with the memories of all of the experiences he had been given. Somewhere in there, he found a balance. Chris got out of the military to save our marriage. It was the best and worst day of his life. Actually, for the longest time, he only thought of it as the worst. It was the worst because he felt he had more to give. Spending years living and breathing for the brotherhood of men, not only in the SEALs, but in all branches of the military, gave Chris an undeniable, valuable purpose. In getting out of the military, he felt he was letting his country down. He didn't consider it the best day until years later when he understood his extraordinary value to our children and to me. I can assure you, Chris Kyle was as flawed as any amazing person is, but he was the most loving, soul-changing husband and father I've ever encountered. Chris's heart never left the military, though, and his drive to serve never waned. Chris and I had the honor of meeting many men and women who had been wounded in combat. Many of them thought that the healing they received in the hospital, though important, was exponentially slower than what they found when they went out in the great outdoors. Many service members were outdoorsmen before they went into the military, and they felt great peace hunting or shooting targets. Chris was blessed to be able to serve countless numbers of veterans during hunts and shoots over the last few years. He discovered a new use for guns, healing. On January 28th of this year, Chris said, I would love for people to think of me as a guy who stood up for what he believed in and helped make a difference for veterans. You know, someone who cared so much about them that he wanted them taken care of. Well, Chris, well done, babe. You did it. And you did it well. Thank you. To all of you in this room, thank you for doing the same as you fight for the rights of all of us, including our veterans. In the short amount of time after Chris got out of the military, he found himself reflecting on how guns affected the many aspects of American history. In doing so, he developed an idea for a book coming out this June called American Gun. In it, Chris chose to tell the stories of 10 iconic guns and the people who used them, altering the course of United States history, from the Revolutionary Wars to the Western Frontier, World Wars, and beyond. As I helped finish American Gun after his death, I reflected on how they have played a, life, a role in my life, too. I pray they will continue to as I am all too aware of the existence of evil in all walks of life. And because of that, I want to thank you and those who came before you for standing strong 
in defending our right to bear arms. Thank you for understanding the difference between the use of guns in terrorizing innocent people in our country and abroad, and the use of guns in protecting against an evil that will not be reasoned with. I will continue to thank you for standing up for the hardworking American families and children when I watch my own children play good guys versus bad guys. When my children and I eat a dinner of venison, elk, and even oryx Chris left us with, I will lift my glass in a toast to you. When I watch an Old West movie or a rodeo in Fort Worth, I will tip my hat in thanks to you and your willingness to protect the American way. When I see a military member, I will thank them, and I will do as Chris wanted us all to do. I will take action to care for them, all the while saluting you, who have helped them maintain their ability to stay strong, empowered, and protected, even after they have been wounded. And when I see a gun, used in an act of pure evil against someone who's defenseless. I will remember long before guns, people have tragically hurt and killed one another. I will pray for God to keep us all strong, and I will thank you for using your time and energy to ensure Americans remain free, fully prepared to feed ourselves, defend ourselves, and ultimately win the battle of good versus evil.